Hey guys, Silent Steel here. Welcome back to another unboxing video for Gakuten Saiban 1, 2, 3 Naruhodo Selection Collector's Package. As you can see, this is uh, kind of like a limited run for the Japanese version of the game for the Nintendo Switch. Now, the Ace Attorney, or rather the Phoenix Wright, or you know, Gakuten Saiban series, whichever way you want to call it by, um, has been remade for Nintendo's consoles countless times so as you can imagine because I'm a big fan I've probably got all of them except the original few cartridges because those are very very rare to come by nowadays so I might, was, might as well go with all the remakes of the game uh, in a higher resolution and all that stuff so yes guys if you guys were planning to purchase this game uh, for the Asian version English edition um, I would say don't wait for it kind of because the Japanese version has the English text format for the game as well since the game doesn't really do voice acting um, like most of the modern games uh, out there well getting the translation works from the original English um, Game Boy cartridges or even the 3DS cartridges uh, it's pretty easy so you just have to convert it to uh, well the Nintendo Switch cartridge and of course make it playable for the Nintendo Switch because uh, the Nintendo Switch is now a touchscreen format plus Joy-Cons so you can play it both like the 3DS version kind of except that it's all on one single screen and of course you can still play like the original Game Boy Advance um, if you've played it on the original Game Boy Advance, you're probably familiar with the button controls. Uh, it will be exactly the same on the Joy-Cons itself. So anyway guys, we're going to take a look at this. The Naruhodo selection because, well, the first three games all talk about Phoenix Wright, which is, which is Japanese name is Naruhodo, Ryuji. So, <laughs> so yeah, <coughs> anyways, um, hopefully they will come out with a collection for Edgeworth. Um, so Mitsurugi, uh, so it's kind of, um, I'm kind of hoping for it because I've never played a single one of his games um, because, well, I was a poor gamer back then, I couldn't afford the cartridges, so yeah, um, trying to get myself those games right now is pretty hard to find uh, considering that the Phoenix Wright series is not exactly everybody's cup of tea because not, every li not everyone likes to read text for games, you know. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, why you should get the Japanese edition um, or maybe even if you're a big fan like me, I actually went ahead with the collector's package here um, that comes with some limited stuff. <clears throat> Alright, so at the back of the box, all right, it shows you the three posters for the games. And of course, here in this Japanese text, it says that it comes with full English Gameplay, as you can see, I'm not sure. Let me just focus this for you guys. There we go. So you can see English text being shown in the Im images here, you know, to prove that the game comes with full English support. You know, so if you're big fans of the game and you, you kind of want it fast because apparently the English version is still on pre order and the game has not been released for the English version, if you can't wait, Go ahead and grab yourself a Japanese copy of the game. It comes with English text. So if you're a big fan, go ahead and do so straight away. <clears throat> okay, so when I got this game, um, it came with a can batch. Alright. So if you guys are unfamiliar with this, it's actually the Japanese text for take that. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so if you guys pre-order the game, it should come with this. But because it's already released in Japan, you might not get this at all. But anyway, let's take a look at the main contents of the collector's package to see what you will actually get, um, you know, from this thing. <laughs> Alright, so the first thing we'll pull out is the game itself. So, here we go. The game. Okay, so... The box is pretty simple, you know, exactly the same like the the paper box that comes with it. Um, so if you open it up, the cartridge is there. 
and of course interestingly enough the back of the box cover actually has a manual on what buttons you need to press to play the game you know um, that's pretty interesting considering that most Nintendo Switch games don't do this at all so fascinating thing that Capcom has done good job Capcom <laughs> all right so the next thing you want to pull out of the box oh. okay so it's this limited edition soundtrack of the game's uh, background music so if you guys aren't uh, fans of the series you probably would not know that there is actually a, a anniversary collection of the soundtrack for all the games um, so yeah this is just a snippet of the um, anniversary collection I suppose um, that's why this thing is still in wrapping condition because I don't think I want to open it up I do have the soundtrack for the limited edition run um, for the anniversary so yeah so as you can see the all the titles available for this soundtrack so yeah okay so that's pretty much it you're getting from this uh, collector's package box is the game plus the soundtrack um, if you pre-order the game definitely you will get the Objection! batch so yeah so is it really worth the I would say limited edition pack I guess so if you don't have the um, anniversary soundtrack um, CD collection so this is definitely something you will look forward to I'm loving the art as well you know so yeah if if you're not a collector fan I guess getting the game itself will be fine the regular edition of the game so yeah don't worry about the English text like I said um, the Japanese or rather the Asian version of the game does come with English text um, so yeah just go yourself go ahead and get a copy online somewhere around the internet uh, definitely you should be able to find it um, easily uh, the game I don't think will be sold out anytime soon <laughs> considering that how many uh, renditions of this have been created out there by Capcom and Nintendo so yeah anyway guys thank you guys so much for watching um, I hope to see you guys in the next unboxing video Alright guys, so I decided to do a Let's Play series of the uh, Phoenix Wright series. <laughs> it's so weird to say it. Anyway guys, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the unboxing portion of the video. And of course now we're going to dive into this trilogy for the Nintendo Switch. Um, this game was originally released on the Game Boy Advance if I recall correctly. But sadly to say I've lost my original cartridge for the game. Uh, that's why I've been buying all the remakes, um, especially for all the different consoles out there like the 3DS. Uh, yeah, so alright, let's dive into it. So as you can see, I'm playing the Japanese version of the game like I've shown you guys in the unboxing portion of the video. Uh, and the game, since it is the Asian version, it does come with the English um, story adaptation as well. So which is pretty fantastic for all those um, foreign fans who want, um, you know, the capability of having to switch the language options from Japanese to English, that kind of stuff. So yeah, alright, so I don't know whether we can actually change the options here. No? So I guess it's only on this main screen where you can actually change all these options. Uh, yeah. So there is vibration for the Joy-Cons which is pretty fantastic. Um, the 3DS didn't really have such a capability. Yeah, so I guess you only can change the game's text uh, from Japanese to English. There is really no voice acting here in this game like they did in the original um, trilogy for the original cartridges. Um, but it could, they could have done a, I don't know, they could have incorporated the animation voice actors into the uh, the remastering of this game as well. But you know, I guess they didn't really want to put in that much effort. But anyways, I'm going to enjoy this um, game, you know, from the bottom up. I, I seriously don't know how many times I've actually played this first trial. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... I, I guess I could... I don't know. I could skip all the necessary um, breakdowns of the game, but that would really kill the fun of it, I suppose. 
Hmm. I'll make it look like he did it. <laughs> August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous. Right? Oh, hiya, Chief. Whew. I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. It's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Huh? Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! Oh! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! Sounds like he wants to die. <laughs> um... Yeah... Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence, I ain't afraid to die! What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished! Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who? Who took her away? Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm doing Bud's voice. Oh. Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick. You're gonna tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky Sepp dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone, that he's a good guy at heart. And that and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number 2. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready. Your Honor. <coughs> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm, um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge 
for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Uh, thank, thank you, Your Honor? Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Uh, yes, Your Honor? And shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you will do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. Let's wait. Uh-oh. No! No way, I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here! Phoenix? Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the, the victim. Of course! I know the victim's name! I, um... Just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press R button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Alright, let's check the court records. So, let's see. Profiles? Cindy Stone! Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone? Correct! Now tell me what was the cause of death. She died because she was... She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct! You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor! As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what an object was? The murder weapon! What's this? Statue of the Thinker! It was found lying on the victim floor next to the victim. I see, the court accepts it into evidence. Right? Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R button to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Lerbatz, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case? You get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. 
Mr. Butts, is it not true that your victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. <laughs> okay, I can't do Butts' voice anymore. Guys, I tried really hard. Uh, voice acting is definitely not my cup of tea, so I'm just gonna go with it as normal as I could. <laughs> I'm sorry you guys had to put up with that long portion of me trying my best. Um, I don't know. <laughs> if you guys want me to try it in the future, uh, let me know in the comments down below if I should or should not do it in the future. Oh god. Uh, I've tried it in the past, but it's definitely not something I can easily do, I suppose, uh, considering that I have to remember what kind of voice I did for each character. Oh god, I don't know how certain YouTubers do it, but god dang it, <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Antony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumb, she just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them uh, the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude... We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? Um, Let's just wait and see. Might be better not to get involved in this one. Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, no way! That cheating she dog! I'm gonna die! I'm just gonna drop dead! Yeah! And what? I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Okay, I missed that first line. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Uh, well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. <laughs> what do I do? Um, I know, I'll send him a signal. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there, I went. Okay. Order! Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, chill! She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her? Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. 
This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit. How do you pronounce the heck out of the name? To the stand. Oh, is it a play on the name Saw It? Mr. Saw It? <laughs> oh god, now that I just realized how many years has it been since this game is out, and I just realized that his name is a pun to. Oh god. Okay. You sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Saw It, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment and I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving, dead. I call it. I wet, I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly, it was 1 pm. The man who was the man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm... Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Shawit <laughs> used was one of those. Hmm, <laughs> I'm still very... I, I don't know, I still feel very strange about his name. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your per... per, per user? How in the world? Per user, okay. Blackout record added to the court record. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes? Uh, yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination? Your Honor? Alright, right, this is it. The real deal. Um, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key, it's in your it's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then once you found the contradiction, well, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with the R button, then point out contradictions in the testimony. I wonder how many times they're going to remind me about the R button. That's a tutorial portion of the game for you, I guess. <laughs> I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing in an apartment. Isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd you wouldn't take notice of him. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, he just seemed strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad and yet frightened at the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing the scene of crime. The defense requests that the witness refrain from conjecture. Of course, what the witness means is the man he saw looked sus suspicious. So what happened next? 
I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Half open, you say? Yes, yes, the door was half open, yes. I watched for a moment, but no one came to close the door. That's odd in a big city like this, I thought. I see, and what happened next? Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door was half open, you see. Isn't it only human to want to peek? We climb mountains because they are there. It's the same thing. Truer words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. Hmm, why did pain cut him off so quickly? So you look into the apartment, what happened next? Then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. Are you sure she was dead? Well, no, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look fatal to anyone. Very well, what happened next? I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. So you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Um... Yes, I mean, no, nothing. Okay, what happened next? I thought to call the police immediately. You thought to call the police? Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Please, please listen to the rest of the testimony. You thought to call the police, what happened next? However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. The phone in her apartment wasn't working? Yes, I mean, no, no it wasn't, right? But you said you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Oh, oh that, I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being the middle of the afternoon, there was no answer at the nearby apartments. Alright, what time did you call again? I remember the, I remember the, I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who was Ah oh, god dang it, what's with me? The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. That's all of it. There must be a contradiction in there somewhere. Examine the court record if ah uh, if something strikes you as being suspicious. Then find the evidence that contradicts his testimony and present it to the court. Okay, so this one was pretty easy. Um, so I'm just going to skip right to the portion where it contradicts. Which is here. So we're going to present. Because the time that she died was 4 to 5 p.m. So what do I press to for oh, X? Okay, there we go. You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of her death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to um nobody. <laughs> to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Oh, that. Oh, um. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Shoyt, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I. 
Uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time, it was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see... You heard a voice saying the time on a tape program? Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. You said heard, not saw. Yes, heard. All I saw was the body lying there. I didn't think to look at anything else, least of all my watch. Hmm, isn't that a little strange? So you're saying you heard something? But if you were so shocked by the body, you wouldn't hear anything at all. The witness did say he actually heard the time. It's ludicrous to suggest he wouldn't hear anything. Hmm, I have to agree with the prosecution. Witness, continue your testimony. There was a voice saying the time it was probably coming from the television. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, no, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right? I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television? The witness has testified he heard the time. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? How do you explain the gap? Well, witness, can you explain this? I guess the victim must have been watching a videotape program? A, a video? Yes, that will explain why the time was wrong. True, true. Right? <laughs> I think the problem lies someplace else. We agreed that you heard the time at a scene then. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Are you sure the voice you heard said it was 1pm? Yes, I can practically hear it now. It was quite clear. Mr. Payne, has the prosecution verified this testimony? Mr. Po- my, my apologies, Your Honor. I too have only just learned that the witness heard the time. Oh, I'm really sorry. I only remember it just now. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Well, you just watch it. <laughs> hmm. Not much point pressing him on that one, was there? <laughs> okay, so... Um... Let me see... It's gotta do with the TV thing, cause that's where Mia, Frey actually um, noticed there was something strange. So this one coming from the television. Um, and we know that there was no power. So... Hold it right there! The prosecution had said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery, and this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video! Uh, I will... Uh. The defense has a point. Do you have an expla explanation for this, Mr. Short? No, I I find it quite puzzling myself, quite... Ah, wait, I remember now! Mr. Short? 
the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. It uh it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sorry. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time, I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. All oh, right, I'm supposed to press. <laughs> That strikes me as a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'll be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry, I only just remembered that table clock. A table clock? There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? A table clock? Was there a clock at the scene? This is the first I've heard of it. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim? The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. That must have been what I saw. Why didn't you tell us that in the first place? I guess it just slipped my mind. I'm not really sure how it happened myself. The witness says he saw the table clock. End of story. Now, find the contradiction. Okay, okay, let's do this. It's definitely the table clock thingy. There we go, so we're gonna... Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was this statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? You with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Saw it. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock! Your Honor, if I may? Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch, you just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue, my apologies. I see, so the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because you're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder! Oh yeah! Prove it! Prove I went in there! I'll do better than that! I can prove you were the one who killed her! You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice! That was the sound you heard! Order in the court! Please continue, Mr. Wright. 
Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Uh, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <sighs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... That day... Never... Look, I... The clock I heard... No, I mean I saw... So, <sighs> Shut up, I hate you! It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her. And he should burn. Burn. Give him death. Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, uh, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clearly if you simply... Let's sound the clock now. Here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen carefully. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, it is the ticker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25? Heck! As you can see, this clock is exactly 3 hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing! Uh oh, what's he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! He, he's right! How, how am I gonna prove that? Damn it! I was so close! Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens! You treat me like a criminal! A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! Uh, I. Almost had him! Sorry, Larry. I, I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. <laughs> I can't do a lady's voice. Mia, I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over! I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder! Nobody can prove that! Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was 3 hours slow and 
Think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock 3 hours slow? Figure out the reason and you have your proof. Right. Right? <laughs> Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be 3 hours slow? Wait! Maybe I can prove it? You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course! There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4pm here, it's 1am the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her head in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Saw It? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Order! Order, I say! Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, uh... He was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor? I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Wuzai! Yeah, not guilty! And with that, this court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house that day and... When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Saw let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Soy grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Phew! Still can't believe I won! Right! Good job in there! Congratulations! Thanks, Chief. Where are we all to you? Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've been in a trial and uh, end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry? You're supposed to be happy, what's wrong now? Oh, Nick, don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I mean bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but, my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was, uh, nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry! Harry? 
Yes, you, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts Innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick! Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? Larry? Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, Ske. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right? Right. Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chum to her. Huh? What about the clock? This is the clock. You made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I, I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am! Thanks! Oh, that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? For me? We'll drink to a toast. Two innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him? Uh, yeah, part, at least. You have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Genie, it's good to have friends. I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us unless you count the clock he gave me. Uh. <laughs> I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Alright guys, so that's the end of the tutorial story of the first game. I'll definitely pick up the second part of the first game <laughs> soon enough. But until then guys, thank you guys so much for watching this unboxing and impromptu let's play video. I apologize for my cringy voice acting uh, throughout this whole thing. <laughs> I'll try my best to do 
uh, better at the next one. Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Do let me know if you like what you see and hear uh, in this video. Uh, well, not so much on the here part, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed just yet. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Phoenix Ride Ace Attorney. Until then. Hey!